second. Right. There we go. All right. So now I'm spotlighting the video, which means all of you can see it. See that? And we, of course, are going to start with a black and white drawing, as always. So I'm going to give you, you have options on this one. We're not going to grid this, but please do not rush through the drawing. I'm going to show you, you can make this any size you want. Um, this is eight by 10 inches, but you can make this any size you want. However, I want you to watch my technique as I, because I talk about how to draw this by looking at it. Okay, so I want you not to race ahead and, and try to, you know, I want, just pay it, just watch the, the construction of the drawing. It's actually important. And one of the things I noticed, you know, what I did last week, what I did yesterday in the class was spend our entire class reviewing the drawing of the painting that the class had done the week before, because everybody had somehow forgotten their drawing, in the excitement of painting and had messed it, messed it up, right? So let's see. So uh, a couple of key points to notice here. Um, I'm gonna mark this. I'm gonna mark this. So one of the things to notice is that if I if I put my you know if I take my here I'll do this with my pencil because I think it's easier to do right so if I if I get the top and the bottom of the jellyfish that little ring right and I go down it's really the top and the bottom here to three, four, five. It's like five heads. And if I decide to do that same measurement lengthwise, like this, so see now I'm taking the length, the, the, the width, and I measure. So the blue is the width. So you'll see that the width is like a little bit less than, so if I go straight down like this, this is five. And if I go across, it's like a little bit less than three. One, two, three. Okay. So when I come here, I'm going to actually mark top and the bottom here with a little dot. And I'm, I'm gonna sort of guess here how wide I think this is, right? So before I start drawing it, ahem, you know who you are. <laughs> I'm gonna measure one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to double check here and see. Well, I don't want to go too fast. Okay. And then I'm going to double check here and see do I have this width right? And I'll know that by seeing if this width comes down to the second head, the second, I don't know, body. So this width should come to this dot. Once I know that's right, then I can start my sketch. So before you, and I want you to look at the shape of this, it's not as flat as you think it is, right? There, it's not as rounded as you think it is. Um, we're gonna start with a simple sketch that kind of gets the bigger shapes in. I'm ignoring this business. We're going to add it in later. We're going to start with this shape. These are really important. One of these days, it's going to kind of sink in for you all. This is my hope for you. It's going to sink in that you're, how do I say it? Um, that you're going to know how to simplify. And I know you're not like, you know, I know we're still working on that right simplifying notice this is by the way a straight top um, here a little bit 
more curved here. And then this, oh, let's not do that yet. Uh, let's do this now. Here, I'll add in this. Oh. But I have my parameters, right? I have my parameters. I want you to notice this this it, this uh, this is a little bit tilted, so the line comes uh, the inside line here comes down. I that I made that a little bit too high. It's more straight and comes down lower. So before you go any further, I want to see I want to see your dots and I want to see this shape just like this. Um, want to make sure you're paying attention. Somebody said to me in class yesterday who normally takes the drawing class, she's like, wait, so we were we were learning how to draw up here in one point perspective. And she said, wait, is this just like the same in drawing? And I'm like, absolutely. Uh -huh. Right. So one of the things that happens is I think one gets so excited by painting, you forget. <laughs> like that drawing is like actually you have to draw like drawing has to happen before the painting happens i mean if you're working uh realistically so go ahead and take a, and i'm going to take a picture of this i thought that was a word you hated me what's that realistically realistic i don't I mean that. you once told me off for using it but i totally agree with you it has to be realistic I wanted to, um, oh, it might have been the way, it might have been the pressure you were putting on yourself. Uh, I like realistic. I mean, that's what I am. I'm a realistic painter, right? I'm not a, I mean, I'm impressionistic, but I'm also realistic. Um, right. Real, it's more like the pressure that you put on yourself, right? Um, so it starts with getting the first shapes right. It starts with getting these first shapes right. So the, I just sent this across. So, right. Right. Nope, okay. not good enough, good enough. Yep. So I want us not to forget this. I was a little disappointed, honestly, the paintings I saw in, in yesterday's class. Um, I know there were problems with Emma being able to check things, but I was like, come on, we both talked about like one point perspective a lot, vanishing point perspective. This we shouldn't forget this, but everybody forgot it. <laughs> so their their peers were like wah and wah and wah like all over the place. But so like, let's come back to basics. But I know it's I get it. I know it's exciting. Also, Sandra, I think this will really be um, the base on this is going to be grayish, but a little pinker because I like the pinks that are in the color version of this. I just thought there was, um, I mean, color wise, it's not the one I would have chosen, but because there's so much white, but we don't, we don't have to paint to be exact color, it is. Right? Yeah, and remember, watercolor uh, is, is aided by white, right? Watercolor helps us. White yes. helps us in watercolor, so you want it to be that way. I'm just waiting. Let's see. Okay. Coming, coming. Let's see, everybody is. All right. Anik, it's a look at the shape of this. There's it's a little bit more like this. Yeah. yeah. That's what I mean. This is why I really wanted to check. Uh, I like you got the tilt though. Very good. Olga, no. <laughs> So here's where Olga, again, you go too fast. So I want you to look at what's happening. You have drawn a perfectly symmetrical shape like this. That's not what's happening. What, oops, can you see that? Yeah. What's happening is it's on a tilt. 
So it's kind of more like this, right? It's bigger here, it's smaller here. I'm going to send this over. And uh, oh, nice, Diana. It's looking really good. Whoops, here. Hold on. I want you to catch yourself, Olga, because you constantly rip off the drawing. I know you want to get to the painting, but if you can't draw, if your painting suffers, but one's painting suffers, not yours, everybody's, right? So pay attention to this drawing. Notice he's at a tilt, which means this is down here and this point is up here. That means this is a little bit wider and this is near there. And I hope you don't mind. I, I, want, I really want you guys to get this. This is why I'm hammering it. And I would say hammering it is the word. I'm hammering it in because I want you it, I could just totally let you make the same drawing mistakes over and over again. Be easy for mm. me. I don't want you to do that. So if I sound like I'm being harsh, that's not my intention. I'm really like trying to get you to see, to actually see what you're looking at and not, um, and not, and not, making not not or not making patterns where there aren't any not making symmetry where there isn't symmetry right uh, um i think i've made mine too big now okay so measure it but i i, I had it right but it um it didn't seem deep enough so i redid it and now the five don't fit in so it's not there you go so try to get yeah Let's see. Just as well to find out now, right? Yeah, Ani, perfect. Perfect. Let's see. Uh, one thing. And I'm going to say you did the same thing that Olga did. You made something. Notice, so this, if I were to put my pencil straight across, right? You see that these bottoms do not line up. This one comes up here a little bit. And this one comes down here. So your right here this point and this point this point should be a little bit higher this point should be a little bit lower you got what i'm saying who are you telling Leah? there we go perfect olga perfect yes absolutely i know you guys can do it <laughs> i know you can do it i know mm -hmm. everybody here can do it all right and then you can add if you've done that and i've said good i've checked your stuff kind of sort of fun. Let's work this line, this kind of, we're just working the outer shapes now. Whoops. Look at how easy it is. And I'm telling you these because look at how easy it is. I totally put this down here because it's easy to make things too big. So easy. I'm going to make this a nice big space because this is ultimately a lot of white. I know we're not getting all the, the details. And I think that's pretty good. I might check. So this. might be tricky to figure out how much space there we go. That's a bit better. this takes up. So I'm checking, let's see, where does this line up? Ah, it lines up exactly with here. So I can see I need to come out a little bit wider here. I yelled at you for talking for talking about realism. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very angry. Oh, uh, 
that's so funny. <laughs> so there's, here's your kind of second shape. You guys put up with so much, sorry. <laughs> you can always just tell me to get more coffee. Sandra. I do know. <laughs> Totally, if you don't want to stick with the colors, you don't need to, but I like the soft pinks. The last one I'd almost chosen for Natalia, but she's not here. It's got it's oh. yellow and purple, which are like our colors. Um, kind of browns and uh, oranges and yellow. It's just, yeah, it's yellow and purple. Well, if you want to do another one, we can totally. No, no. Well, uh, I'm okay to do a, a draw this one. Maybe I do a different color. I like to, um, they're all difficult because of these things hanging. Right, exactly. It'll be interesting to see how to handle that. Um, Rashmi, put your pencil straight across. You're drawing. If this tip lines up with this tip, it means you've got to bring this side up a little bit. So just check. I guess I like the translucent blue. Yeah, so what I, you know, I was thinking about Versailles. And then I thought- oh, no, I'm not gonna Versailles this. A little think. bit more purpley pink. Right. I think it's, I don't think this is good for Grisaille. I think we're gonna try a variation on Versailles. The color's gonna be a little different. It's gonna be pinker. That's my, that's my, that's my guess. I was just thinking because it's so translucent, it's maybe not so good to have an underpainting. Um, Monica looks great. Looks great. Um, you can make this thicker because we're gonna. This needs to stay white, right? Okay. So, um, okay. Yep. Um, give it more space, right? Just so that we don't lose it. <laughs> I remember I was once accused by a Reuters uh, person of, um, she was a new painter and I was going through and looking at everybody's paintings and giving people like, you know, comments. And I, I was saying a lot of positive things because, you know, people had done pretty well. And I said something positive about hers and she said, well, now I know you're just the kind of person who says nice things to people all the time. And oh. the whole class burst out laughing. <laughs> And I said, whoa, don't project your stuff on me. I am not that person. <laughs> if I say a nice thing, I mean it. <laughs> if I say you did it perfectly, like I just told Olga, I mean it. <laughs> I was like, you clearly don't know me very well. <laughs> I suppose there are teachers like that, but nobody could accuse you of that. Right, right. And, you know, because I don't think that helps you. So, like, you know, I, and, but it was also, you know, um, there are coping strategies that certain people have in classes when they try, when they're trying to, I noticed there's a lot of anxiety around art, right? People have a lot of anxiety around doing it well or not doing it. And like particularly people who are quite smart in other areas really struggle because the intellectual process is so different, right? And there are student, some students react by denigrating their own work, right? It's because then they know, right, that um, 
then then they've managed their expectations kind of on the low end, right? So that is a reaction. That is a type of reaction that a smart student has to the new thought process. It's because it's hard. And uh, and so I was like, no, don't, no, 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 no. You can't, I mean, <laughs> you can decide in your head that this isn't very good, but I actually think you kind of got this part right and this part right, and this, you know what I mean? Like that's, but that is one type of reaction. So there is a student who will make a joke about how bad their work is. There are students who will be really highly anxious there are students who will, so you kind of see over the time, it was a certain type of student behavior. And I tried to shut that down pretty quickly because um, uh, who has the time really, <laughs> right? For who has the time for it? Um, Patty, all right. Not bad, Addie. It kind of comes in a little bit. Uh, well, I see you've got that. Looks pretty good, actually, kiddo. This, I noticed this, um, this little bump here, which is associated with this part, lines up exactly with the edge of your, uh, with your, the edge of your anemone. Can you see that? This one here. If I come here. This lines up exactly. So make sure this part is lining up exactly with this, and then this comes out a little bit more. Can I What's that? I think we might as well entertain ourselves with cute things while we're out. I know, look at how he's got his little hand on his I know. Head. it's And it's the kind of, light's really good, and the little. It's kind I, of casual, and it kind of. Yeah. Oh, somebody is. Oh, Paul. <laughs> Hi, Paul. That was really weird. <laughs> that was me talking, me and Jean Tate talking, but on a different recording. <laughs> I'm drawing the baboon. Great. You drew a baboon? Uh, I'm drawing the baboon. You were, there. you were there. I don't think it was a baboon. I think it was one of the monkeys that you provided us, Sandra. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no baboon drawing happened without it. Oh, Mr. Monkey. <laughs> no, no monkey or baboon drawing. No primate drawing happened without you. <laughs> well, I would never. I would never. <laughs> so, Sandra, you're sideways. No, oh, that's weird. What's going on there? What did you see? You're sideways. You're sideways. Oh, that's interesting. Can yeah. You see? <laughs> Oh, wow. oh. Mm. I don't know what to do about that. Mm. Should I leave and come back? Um, can you just turn your iPad? Yeah, but then I'm going to see you long. Oh, then don't worry about it. Just uh, make it's it easy. Like, like an iPhone setting. Now oh, that's it, that's it, no. No, that's it. It's fine. It's uh, it didn't realize I uh, I had to turn it to charge it, right? And it, it got a bit confused when oh, I turned. Oh, oh, cool. All right. So now let's go into great job. By the way, you guys are killing it. See, I'm gonna tell you when you do it right. <laughs> yeah, is mine, but okay, no. Uh, let me take a look. And check mine too, please. Because that's it. That's it. absolutely. Uh, Addy, that looks good. Uh, yeah, Rashmi, that looks good. Um, make sure that this, so you, so this bump comes a little bit past this line. If you draw a line straight down, notice where it lines up, right? So I think you need to bring, extend it out a little bit. And let's see, gosh, Sandra. Oh, lovely. Um, so Sandra, I would tell you the same thing. This. It is slightly does stick out, but I can make it stick out a bit more. If you draw a straight line down, this. Yes, edge, it sticks out. Yeah, lines up exactly, and this comes out here. So that's all we, 
Oh, but lovely. The bit, the bit of the bottom maybe needs to come so in. Scalloped. And like Sandra, if you guys want to put in those little scalloped edges, totally, you can totally do that. I'm Take no a lampshade. Because you're going to end up painting these anyway. I like that. All right. So now let's start getting some of the inner shapes in here. And we'll start, of course, with this. And then I think we want to get some of the main. So try not to get too overwhelmed by all the tentacles. There's really just, let's see, there's this one, right? This big one. There's this one that comes behind. That's one. There's like this, three or four. Are we, are we gonna leave this white? Um, uh, uh, it dep uh, let me look. Because if not, maybe only the bottom ones white and the top. I mean, for the moment, yeah, no, we're going to put color in these because they. Because have... if we don't leave them white, it's almost easier to paint them without drawing them, right? Because otherwise, we're going to see the lines and everything. Uh, we're still going to want some of these shapes. Yeah, I'm not giving you everything, I'm just giving you the major shapes. I mean, the very long, thin ones. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Don't worry about that. Good instinct. And we're going to add these little light pieces in later, right? So just look at, there's really one, two, three, I think there's like four um, big tendrils that curl around. You'll be able to see them better here. Um, yeah, so, it, you know, uh, it's interesting. One of the challenging things, I don't know if you guys find this to be true, I certainly do, um, is trying to get, how do I, you know, when you've got something like this with all of these frills and what, you know, how complicated it is to, to how do you simplify? So I really always try to take things in little pieces so that I'm not too overwhelmed. So this shape is going to be, I look at like kind of, what are the shapes that I can obviously see like this one? So here's kind of number one, right? And then number By the way, um, you know what? gave me the idea of doing this was, in fact, uh, because there was a gouache um, color, you know, she, she taught it to the kids. Oh, yeah. Do you know how she handled all that? Well, I mean, sort of, from what I can tell, but um, I am working with gouache myself, but I'm going to give myself a couple months to learn how it works before I start teaching it. Right. So, uh, yeah, I kind of know how she did I mean, it. she would be facing the same problems we are. And because she was teaching kids, she can't have made it complicated. Right. Or exactly. Just wanted... exactly. Um, gouache is different, right? Because we can layer with it. Yes. So she can. layered with it. Um, I'll share with you the, the painting that she did. You'll be able to see what she did. OK. Um, yeah, we're, we're getting a little bit more technique driven. But I agree with Sandra that there's only so much we're going to be able to do here. So don't put too much pressure on yourself to get yeah, all the details. We're not going to get all of these little ruffles and things. It'll be much easier to add in paint. Absolutely. This is why we like paint. <laughs> paint is easier. And I was explaining this. It was so funny because uh, yesterday I was, uh, you know, teaching that 
that painting that Emma did in gouache, but draw the drawing aspect of it. And of course, after about 20 minutes, I was bored with the pen. Like I was just complete, I totally wanted to paint it, but we were in a beginning drawing class, so I didn't. And at some point I said, here's how important drawing is. And then I said, I'm bored with this. And they said, oh, but you said your drawing is important. And I said, you draw with every instrument, right? They started laughing. They're like, but you draw, you said, I said, I just don't like the pencil. The pencil is like, boring to me as a medium. I mean, it's, I get its value. I get, we all know how to manipulate it pretty well. I think this is as detailed as you really need to get here, right? Um, they, uh, the class was thinking that only, um, the only reason you, how do I put this? The only reason you, um, uh, the only time you're drawing is when you're with a, using a pencil, but that's not true, right? We draw with paint. Um, I am just grabbing, and I'm going to take a picture of this in a second so you can see it. The biggest shapes in this upper area. And this is about as detailed as our drawing needs to be, I believe. Um, let's see here. Olga. Yeah, can you send this other painting, uh, the drawing as well, where you uh, made the right, marking? Yep, yep, absolutely. I'm just about to do that. Okay. I think that's Olga. Oh, out of curiosity, how big is your drawing? You Very small. It's small. I can yeah. see. So, I whoops, sorry. Here, hold on. I didn't get that quite right. So, I can see. Um, I like your. Uh, I like how the how you have simplified to suit the smallness. I like that. I can see what you've done there, and I think the simplification is really good. Thank you. Nadia, that's not bad. Yep. This reminds me of biology class. Biology, <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, like an <laughs> um, yeah, can you send the other picture as well, please? Uh, the one, the, uh, the printout on which, yes, yes. Black and white? Yeah, just to see the marking. Yep, 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 absolutely. Yes, I can see that. Now, I, while you guys are doing this, I'm going to do a little testing on the side just to see. Just trying to test a couple of things. Monica's cat, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. He has a particular sweet, hilarious meow. Very sweet voice. Yes. They, they say you have a sweet voice, Mother. I say that. Okay. You feel like you have a sweet voice? Okay. Don't catch it, eat it. Oh, he's a little black cat. What a cutie. He's All a right. killer. He's a killer, I'm sure. Oh God, I find birds all the time. <laughs> oh. I'm testing a couple of different strategies. So you guys will see up here, and in fact, I think I'm even gonna take more paper. Here, I'm gonna be testing a few things. One of the things I'm checking is, what happens if I lay kind of a pink layer down, a soft pink layer down? let it dry, and then put an orange on top because we've got this pink and then we've got the, this is very light, but like behind the pink is a little bit of blue. So I'm just playing with a few different layering techniques before we get into it. So you all 
also can test this. I mixed quinacridone red with a little bit of ultramarine blue to make a kind of light blue layer, right? A kind of purplish layer. And then I waited for it to dry. And then I put orange and burnt sienna and a little bit of burnt umber. I mixed them together and put them on top to see. Can I make these dark sort of browns lay over my pinks or my purples? So, but the, the first layer has to be pretty light. Sandra has gotten very, if you'll notice on Sandra's watercolors, she's gotten very good at layering in light. Wouldn't you say, Sandra? That's, I would say, that is the thing that I'm seeing in all of your pieces that you're going light on the first layer. Oh, yes. And then I think in this case, I saw, by the way, a beautiful painting yesterday. It was a, the reason it was so beautiful is because it was a, a poppy and the person had managed to make the petals translucent. And so I think in this case, it, you don't have many more layers after that. With what, with what medium, with watercolor? Watercolor, yeah. Nice. It was, yeah, I struggle with that to try and get the translucency that I like. I, I looked at it and all I could think is it's just very light. It's Super light. sort of what you would be like the first layer, except you, you don't go beyond in for those particular petals. So yeah, I want, so take a separate piece of paper. Uh, you know, I'm using just computer paper right now. It's not the same paper. Take a piece of paper and do some light, purpley, pinky, bluey washes. Take your time, give yourself a couple of different uh, very light, like super light. This is too dark. So lighter than this, you know, super light. And see how light you can make it, these purpley pinky washes. And then see what happens. See if you can lay a orangey brown on top. I'm mixing three colors. Wait for them to dry because that's kind of how we're going to start. And just to give you a sense of that i mean let's look at the color picture right it's kind of pinky purpley we're gonna leave this part oh it's so pretty and that's got yellow in it here now i need to get some more yellow give me a second i clean up my yellow i i don't know about you guys but my yellows get totally at between, in every painting, I muck up my yellows. I have to clean them off the top because I mix them with other colors and they're very quick to kind of meld with the other colors. So usually I'll just take a little bit of water. If you're doing this, if you're doing this the way I'm doing this, I'll take a little bit of water on a, um, on a paper towel or a rag and I'll clean up. See, I'm just cleaning off the top, really. And then I might even refresh it with some fresh color. So here is Gamboge. So there's, there's Gamboge. I might put, oops, you can't see this. Sorry. Here, let's see this, what I'm doing. So I just cleaned up all my yellows with some, yeah. uh, with a pretty brush. And now I'm going in and I'm, I'm adding in more to the paint. I mean, if you just have like those regular pats, you can just clean them up. But if you've got tube paint, it's nice. You can kind of freshen up your paint. And it looks pretty. Good. Uh, did you guys enjoy Emma's teaching last week? I know Sandra said it; she liked it. Very much so. Yeah. Um, she did a really good job. I'm proud of her. Yeah, I'm thinking that we might add another class in the fall. And I'm actually thinking it might be this same time. Because um, we really only have 
one or two classes that are good for Europe, right? We've got a lot of US based classes, but not a lot of Europe focused classes. So I thought this, this might be a nice one. And maybe I'll have her teach squash. Maybe that's what we'll have her do. Does that sound interesting to you all? I worry that like gouache will, I mean, do you think it's too specific to do gouache? No. Oh, no, that's amazing. And if somebody doesn't want to do gouache, they can always make it like in watercolor or in acrylic. That's true. That's a good point. All right, then that's, then we might try it. Cause right, it's fun. Are you as obsessed Olga, with gouache as I am right now? Yeah, for yeah. sure. And Sandra also is obsessed with watches. Yes. I didn't get it. And then like you guys all started talking about it and I started playing with it. And now I totally get it. You guys, I'm completely obsessed with wash. Wash is crazy. You, you know, this is why I got into watercolor because I wanted wash, but the, during the lockdown, like I was looking in January, there was none to be found. Really? Because everybody bought some. It, I mean, like, yeah. But, Oh, right. it's good for kids. They tend to use gouache for kids, right? But you've been talking about designer and artist gouache. There was none to be found. Right. I guess first they bought the kids and then when they couldn't find anything else. They... Right. That's what. Right. Well, and I think gouache is one of those great, like, combo. Like, I'm re what I'm really understanding is gouache is one of those great, um, um, you know, mediums that does everything, right? Where you get everything, where, where you can do everything with it. And that's kind of neat. Yeah, I'm very excited about it. I am too. I think it's like really amazing. It's, it's like, it's like the immediate, like I said, the immediacy of watercolor. Anyway, um, well, I would love to add gouache class. And then maybe Emma and I can co-teach it or she can teach it or I'm, I'm thinking about adding another European class, which I think would work for you, Sandra, with your work. Yes. Schedule. Uh, it works with Diana because she and Annika because you guys like this earlier time frame. It works for India because we can write it's an 830 p.m. So this class will remain watercolor or wash for the rest of the year. No, I think we can decide from time to time what we want to do with it. If you guys want to move to gouache, I would be happy to move you to gouache in the fall. If you want to go back to acrylic, we could do that. Yes. I think we could go to it. I would like to keep it like a water-based medium paint. So I would say we can move... Um, and subject wise as well, I mean, on, uh, because I, I see that there are figure drawing classes early in the morning for us in India. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, so anything like that planned for us in the evening? Well, let me think about that, okay? How to make that happen. But because I, it's like, we've been on watercolor for like, what, four months now? No, yeah. three months. No, we haven't. Fourth month. We don't have. Sorry? been on watercolor since April. Yeah, so it's July and now. Yeah, yeah, maybe what I might do is I might switch. I'd like to always have a figure drawing class. So maybe what, if you guys want to, we could switch over to figure draw. Uh, let me think about that. I'd like to have a water class, color class going and a figure drawing class going and figure okay. drawing going to portraiture. So we could switch over to figure drawing portraiture in the fall and then, i would like that I would and really then like that. i can move the figure drawing class into watercolor so there we can switch the subjects with no 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 i'm not talking about your figure drawing class rashmi the current figure drawing class which you can't take because it's at where, where is the current when is the current figure drawing yeah. in the morning. <laughs> it's on wednesday it's on wednesdays or thursday morning for him thursday so, morning it's a West Coast evening class. Right now, figure drawing is a West Coast evening class. So what I might do is switch them to painting of some kind, maybe watercolor or gouache, and switch you guys over to figure drawing and face drawing so that you can get, um, so I can still be offering both, but uh, we'll just switch the classes. Does that sound? I wouldn't be able to. 
that. I mean, because I want to stick with watercolor. I'm not interested in figure drawing at all. But I and I'd love to do. Yeah, some but I'm interested in figure drawing, it. so I would think that would be a really good idea. Um, we'll come up with a way. We'll come. Let me. I'll think about that, and I'll come up. Let me think about it. Okay, but there is some desire to move this class back to figure like doing something different. Yeah. Yes. All right. All right. Let me think about that. And Sandra, what's nice about you is you always have projects going, so you can keep going. You know what I mean? Like we can, you can keep going. I will add another. And do my own thing anyway. I will add another morning painting class, so I could change this one to a, a drawing class. You still get your morning painting. I get okay, it, that works. Right? I'm getting it. Yeah. Well, everyone likes it. I mean, because um, like whatever the consensus consensus. I think, I, mean, that'll, I think that'll work. I think that'll work. I like it. I just like to have something of each of the things going all year. Okay. So, hold on. I'm going to do one more test here. I was trying um, the uh, like acrylics again, and I think I've forgotten everything. And I was feeling really shocked. <laughs> It's definitely a different each one. Acrylics. Um, so I just felt that as if I've forgotten all the techniques. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I have to watch videos again. <laughs> I remember when Emma, Emma said that same thing. She was like, oh my God, I've forgotten everything about acrylics. It's very different, right? The thought process in terms of layering, in terms of, yeah. yep, it is. It's crazy. So I'm experimenting here. Like this. Experimenting with mixes because this is a little bit complex. Yeah, I agree with you, Sandra. I don't think we can do a good sigh on this one. It's <coughs> there's too many, it, the colors are too warm. We don't want to no, no, be careful here. Okay. This will turn this off. All right. Okay. Quit mucking around, Leanne. Get it done. <laughs> so, okay. Here we go. So, just so that you know, I'm thinking this through as I'm, I'm doing it, right? So, with color this is tricky. I believe that we're going to start and I will walk you through this as I do this. I'm going to start with a kind of a pinkish, very light pinkish layer here and down here. Take a picture of this so you can really see it. Very, very light. So I'm using quinacridone. I'm using a cool pink. And then a touch of, there's also a little tiny touch of pale yellow, lemon yellow, tiny, tiny bit, but mostly just pink. And it's super light. And I'm looking at where this is. So I'm trying to bring this in, this pink in, wherever I see it. Because I, what I really predominantly see here is pink. There's a lot of other colors mixed in, but there's this kind of lovely, the sort of unifying color to me feels like pink. So everything here is this same. Can I really do that? So I'm going where I see the pink. This twin red and um, any other color? I I I sometimes uh, drifted in a little bit of pale yellow. Okay. But mostly pink and really watery. So you can see that I'm like 
kind of, of it's so watery like it's mostly water and i'm kind of splashing it in in a few places mostly where the whites are where the kind of lighter colors are a kind of along a few of the ruffles down here Most is water at this point. And I feel like other colors can come in. So I picked pink because I see this pink because I want the pink to be to have a place. I'm afraid if I put it over things, it's not going to show up. So I'm going to show you exactly where I have it. I'm going to take this picture so you can kind of see where it is. We're going to do a lot with blue next, but I wanted pink to be in in the major places. That looks great, Abby. The drawing's good. The drawing's perfect, Rajmi. Excellent. Excellent. So I've got this kind of pink. Oops, I can see this kind of. So this really soft pink, not everywhere. Notice where it is and where it isn't. It's kind of up in here. It's a little bit in here. It's down in here. And then I think blue is the next step here. I, yeah, doing this in, um, let's see, waiting until, I'm waiting until my, I'm feeling, I'm on my game. Paul? Off. We have to give it to this person on Saturday. Oh, who is that? Oh, I, I see. Sorry, I thought that was me. I thought, <laughs> sorry, I thought that, that was me. Bring my leg down quite a bit. My foot down. Oh wait, somebody is playing my It's much bigger. I noticed that he's almost halfway down the page. And I'm gonna, okay, mute that. Wait, were you saying, oh. Was that you? Who was playing that? No, I'm trying to figure out how to mute you guys on Zoom and how to listen to the video because it it's- can't mute like you. Oh, you're, oh, you're right. I don't think you can mute. I don't I've think you can mute on Zoom. You can only mute yourself. But yeah. if you discover it, let me know because. No offense, guys, but like if I hear you and I hear the video, it it doesn't. You, it's like you, I got you. You can't do a video with a Zoom class. I, you know, Tosh, you do your thing, thing, but how to do it. But I don't. I think you just turn down your volume, Paul. Yeah, but then you can't hear the video. I can hear the 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 other one. Yeah. Right. All right, so Tosh Ween has somehow figured out how to do this, but she's not here. Uh, we should ask her. There's probably some way. Yes, all right. So I am just using plain. Uh, Paul, maybe if you go to the, to the settings, you can disconnect audio. Even you wouldn't be able to hear us at oh. all. Then. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. That's absolutely right. That's how you do it. You're right. Genius. And great thinking. Brilliant. All right. So this blue that is in a lot of the places, um, I mean, I have kind of limited blues. I've got a turquoisey blue that's sort of green right there. I've got ultramarine blue, which is kind of your basic, you know, warm blue. I've got a little fallow blue. So I'm going to give you guys a little bit of leeway. I might actually try mixing all these blues together. I was going to ask you what kind of blue that is, because in a way, seeing as the, it's almost the, animal, the animal looks very luminous, but it only looks very luminous because of this amazing blue. 
Right. It's almost purple. It's almost purple. So you purple at the bottom. At the at the top, it's lighter. But yeah, I don't know what kind of blue it is. Still, well, I mean, I think you have to mix them. I think okay. there's no way to get this blue. So what I would say is, if you've got cerulean, you might want to throw a little cerulean in. Um, a little bit of ultramarine. So the ultramarine deep, or oh, the, no. there is an ultramarine, but as but as a, or French ultramarine has got some purple in it. But you can also put drift in a little bit of pink, monochrome red, into any blue that you mix. So okay. This is a, a color. I'm just looking at it to see. I'd say it's more fallow than it is. Um, uh, but that was a bit green. So I think it's a mix. And I don't know if we'll be able to get exactly this color. I don't know, fallow seems to be, it too, seems to be a bit too green. If any of you have cerulean, you might mix cerulean with a little bit of ultramarine blue or deep. I'm just playing with the colors now. Uh, uh, mix cerulean with what did you say, Leah? With purple? Ultramarine, ultramarine blue. Um, that's kind of nice. I'm mixing it on the bottom here. Um, cerulean, I'm mixing turquoise with a little bit of ultramarine because that's what I've got. But you could also try mixing cerulean. You could try adding a little bit of pink to it. Um, yeah, that actually is coming a lot. So I'd say ultramarine, touch of cerulean, and a teeny tiny touch of pink. Really at the bottom. You notice I'm starting at the bottom because it's not, you know, if I need to shift this color. And in fact, you don't even have to paint all the way around. And notice how much I'm kind of room I'm giving for my whites, kind of going around the edge. So, uh, Annika, if you remember, I asked you to give a little bit more space down here. That's so that we can get yeah. that white. See that? Yeah. This would be a little bit bigger than you think. Um, And remember, you can go over with more blues. If you feel like I just don't have this blue right, you can adjust your blue with a little bit of purple on the top layers. But I definitely feel it's more of a warmish blue than, um, than that cool fallow blue. Fallow blue, which is often a really great blue for seeds, uh, just it feels a little too green. So turquoise or cerulean with a little bit of ultramarine blue seems to be the best. So I'm going to bring it up into this, this area here, right, between the pinks. And then I'm going to kind of bring it down around the edge of things. We'll bring it in later, but right now let's just paint around the edges of things. So this whole point of watercolor, right, is that um, we start lightly kind of gradually going around things. So yeah, I think it was, I'm pretty sure it was a good idea to start with those pinks because we're going to bring the blues inside, but we want to bring them in around the pinks. This is a super challenge. 
I think it's very hard. It is. I'm, I'm curious how, uh, what kind of shortcuts uh, Emma took. Um, with gouache. Well, it's different. It's gouache. I know. It's uh, almost impossible to it's do. Different. It, well, this is, you know, that's why I said uh, manage your expectations on this one. <laughs> It's like, you know, this is what you guys wanted, you know, this is what oh, yeah, 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 because it looks so beautiful and luminous. I'm thinking maybe this is something that has to be painted very, very loosely, you know, wet on wet, but I have no idea. And gouache or in gouache, in better for gouache or, but I'm glad we're trying it in watercolor. It's better for gouache, it's probably better for gouache or acrylic. But I think there's something to be learned about doing it in water. I think there's things that watercolor will give it. There we go. Okay. And you might take some of that blue and brush it in on top here, just on the top. I like how, for example, I like actually the softness. It's not the boldness of the color, but I actually appreciate the softness, the wateriness of the blue around this BC. I kind of like it. It's not the same, but it's kind of a neat, I'm liking seeing what's happening here. I sort of, I, I'm not disliking this softness, right? around this is good you guys you know this is very advanced like thinking about your painting so i like that we're doing this even if we're all like oh, i don't know <laughs> <laughs> i don't know about this i don't know because i think what it helps us learn is you know how to like kind of handle how what each medium can do can bring to a subject. So I, I'm liking this. I like the kind of, even though it's not the hard surface of this, I like the, the softness of the color around this BC. I can go a little bit darker now on the next layers. Notice I haven't really gone in yet. I kind of like it. It's interesting. Um, let me take a picture of this. Is this a sea urchin? No, <laughs> it's a jellyfish. A sea urchin has got spikes like a hedgehog. Yeah, it looks. It looks like a purple hedgehog of the sea. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Addie, that looks great. It's so beautiful. It is. And I know we're all like, I don't know how my painting is going to turn out, but let's let go of that for a second because it is an absolutely glorious creature. I think uh, the more beautiful like this, the more poisonous, venomous. Oh, really? <laughs> I, I think in Asia, they've got some, I think these things live in Asia, the more colorful, they have some that can kill you in Asia or leave you very deep scars. These tentacles wrap around you and burn. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, ah! But you know, it's not like that in nature, like very colorful things, they, it's a warning, like don't eat me. Yeah, that's like a protection system, right? Just, yep. yeah. Oh, Anik, lovely. So look at this, you guys, this is actually, and notice Ani kind of preserved her little light strings here, which you totally could do as well. I like how this is, I like what's happening here. That's yeah, beautiful. Me too. 
I like it. I don't know, I mean, I don't know where it will go. I like that we're all a little bit like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I myself am included in that. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I've never tried this. This is challenging. I'm appreciating uh, everybody's bravery. Struggle. Okay. <laughs> struggle. I'm free, right? Like, let's say bravery and struggle. Yes, I'm appreciating the struggle. My own included. I'm appreciating our all of our struggles. I think it's kind of neat. Um, and I like that, you know, for me, I am not one of those artists that has a strong idea about how my stuff should look. I'm always, uh, there are artists who are, are very controlling like that. They have a very specific idea of what they want. And you know what I mean? They kind of strive to get it. But I love the idea that I don't quite, I still, after 20 years, don't really quite know what's going to happen in any painting. Like, I have a general idea. I have a technique that I follow. You know, I do things in a certain way. But I'm, like, still kind of sweetly surprised by every painting. And I like that feeling. To me, that's like, it's almost like unwrapping a present. I don't know if you feel that way. It's like, oh my God. So it's not maybe what I expected, but it is uh, kind of neat in a way that I didn't imagine. I like that. Also, I'm gonna give us permission if you've got gouache to use a little gouache on these top layers because I think that's where we're gonna get our traction. So we will start with watercolor. And if you've got gouache, um, you'll use gouache on the top layers. And if you, um, don't have gouache, you'll use, you know, your thick paint. Annika, as we were discussing, that sort of thing. Yeah. So here we are. Yeah, Olga. Olga, you got, are you using gouache? No, no, it's watercolor. You got some nice, dark, very rich darkness there. I like it. Look at how dark Olga's is. <laughs> You're such a natural painter, Olga. I can see the Rashmi, lovely, lovely. Um, I can see where your desires lie, well, all of you. I can see them all, but Olga, I can particularly see yours because look at look at that boldness you got in your paint. Also, you're going a little smaller, so you can kind of control it a little better, yeah. right? Right. Okay. So once you've gotten a kind of basic, you guys, these are all looking pretty good. I'm proud of you guys. You're the bomb. You're the bomb. You're working hard. All right. So once we, and we may darken this later, we may push this darker like Olga has, but let's kind of get into some of the details. I'm going to switch my brush to a skinny brush, right? And I'm going to start with that um, dark, kind of brownish red, burgundy um, um, scalloped edges, because I feel like getting that in is really going to help with everything else. So, what am I using? I'm using Alizar and Crimson. Is, is this gouache? Uh, no. No, no, not yet. Okay. Alizar and Crimson, Burnt Sienna, and a little bit of, um, uh, and a little bit of Burnt Umber. I'm gonna see. Try not to, try to follow the pattern. Let me take a picture of this up close so you can really see it. Try to follow the actual scallops of the dude. I don't know if he's a dude. Are they like gender oriented? A jellyfish? Or is uh, they don't know. Pretty much like, well, this dude, we're calling him a dude. This dude here. But I can tell you yes. is that fish and in fish with fish and birds, it's the male, so we have a maker. That's they have right. a one. Who are very beautiful. That's I right. don't know where we humans oh. went wrong here. 
<laughs> why we have to wear, you know, the eyeliner and the high heels. <laughs> Definitely an, an invertebrate, though. <laughs> This is an invertebrate, this is true. So I'm starting with this kind of darker bit here, this darker scallop on the bottom. And then on the, on the top of the scallop is a little bit of a bright red, like cadmium red stroke. So I can even go back in. All right. right and add this kind of lighter red, really red. Cad red on the top. Yeah. Yeah. Which color could you use for those dark reds? It's Alizar and Crimson. Okay. Alizar and Crimson, and then some burnt umber and a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, thanks. So it looks more brown, right? Here, I'll take a picture of this so you guys can see. And then the other thing I'm seeing in here are little bits of blue in the kind of canopy here, more on like this side, just on this side. And I see little touches of yellow. So I'm grabbing in a little bit of yellow. You know, I'm going to test this first before I suggest you do it. I'm having to do a lot of cleaning off of my palette. You'll see I'm cleaning up the So I'm grabbing a little bit of pale yellow or lemon yellow. And I'm, I'm dropping that in amidst the pink here in these kind of whitey areas. You may come back in and down here. So there's a little bit of yellow kind of where I left things white over the pink. You guys can see that, but I added in some yellow in, there in this kind of light white section. And then I guess the next thing to do would be to go back to the small brush and take the, I'm sorry, I'm going a little bit ahead, but I, I will stop as soon as I make sure it works. Diana, how's your owl coming? I'll take a picture. I haven't come very far. Okay. I've been researching refrigerators. Oh, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, the refrigerator fucked up? Yeah, it died. It just died. She's got And you've only got the one or you've got another one? No, I'm going to have to go and buy one. I but have, a, have, the one I in have the a fridge fridge freezer in the garage, but it's already full. Oh, oh, oh my God! That's a problem in this heat. Yeah, it is. So I have to get one. 
then you don't know how long time it takes for them to deliver. Right. So. So I'm just taking burnt sienna in sort of strong amounts and laying in some of the darker spots on the jellyfish. You know what I mean? Not all of them. We can go in and add more later, kind of darker ones, but I just wanted to get those in. And I want to kind of keep this area fairly light. So what I actually might do is go around the edge. I'm appreciating all of those very dark lines here. So I'm going to come around the edge of this jellyfish like this to really push that white. See how we can use the outside, our border, to really push what's happening in All right, so now my God, we've been going for an hour and a half. Wow. I guess I better hustle it up here. Um yeah, I think we are gonna go over with gouache. So using my skinny brush, control that better. Kind of going over with a little orange, kind of an orangey color. I'm coming into the jellyfish now and trying to get some of those ruffly edges. I'm working with several colors on my palette. I'm probably going to go over the edge with a little bit of dark. But I'm looking to see, I've got like quinacridone red. I've got a, a little bit of burnt sienna. In some places I might even add cadmium red. Right, to get some of these layers. You don't have to get it exactly like the photo. Thank God. That would be maddening, right? And we're going to bring blue in here and then come back over with some gouache colors, I think. So what Emma did with gouache is way, you know, she did all of the, um, what do you call it? The, the tentacles with um, solid colors, and then she went over the top with lighter, right, to, to add it like you would with acrylic. But we can't really do that with watercolors. We have to bring in our, our, our layers more slowly to make sure they all show up. You'll see that some of these ruffles are dark blue and some are kind of pinky orange. So you can go back and forth between your dark blue and your pinky orange, just to kind of try and get some of the shapes. I'm actually mixing a purple to this dark bluish color. So you see in some places, there's a kind of pink, and then in others, there's a kind of blue. So you can go back and forth between pink and blue. 
hanging down. I'm looking as much as I can, but I really want to now encourage you to like, just do what you can see and don't worry about every detail. You see how this is starting to get a little bit of prettiness to it as we start to get darker layers in. Thank God it's right. <laughs> and this is the easy one. <laughs> this is like the easy one, Sandra. I just can't. <laughs> I just wonder if you can teach this to kids, we can do it. But it's very hard. It's not the same. It's not the same medium. Um, it's not the same. Right, so we're having to layer in a completely more careful kind of way. I can totally teach this as an acrylic painting. It would be a lot. Really? Oh yeah, no question. Now you guys wanted to do this in watercolor, maybe want to. Well, shoot because. It, yeah. But like it's um, but I'm I'm committed to going through the process with you on it. <laughs> um. At some point, when you've laid in some ruffles, you're gonna see here that I'm going back in with my glue and coming in between the ruffles to bring that glue in. See that? So now we're starting to get, yeah, this is entirely different than how we would do it. And of course you can do it with kids, easy to do it. With grownups, easy to do it. This is easy to do in wash and in um, acrylic. It's just not as easy to do. Watercolor is just the hardest one. And yet you would think it's possible because it's so translucent, but not really. It's well, it's just, it's, there's a, it must be a technique for complex, them. you know, it's more complex. So you see how I'm bringing my blue in around, once I start to add some of those layers in, yeah, we're going to switch over to gouache at this point, if you've got it, <laughs> we're going to do it at this point. I just don't... But Sandra, I think that doing a watercolor base and um, a kind of a gouache upper layer would be a fantastic, for you, I think would solve every issue you've ever had. With yes, possibly, but you know, um, but owl, yeah. I did a watercolor base and it turned out pretty badly. Well, what's that messed up with a missing mixing the colors? It's the mixing the colors, right? So that's it's also hard. that the brush strokes are not the same. Well, yeah, it's a little, it's different. It's definitely different. Ooh, I like how this is starting to look though. I want to tell you, I feel like this is starting to look kind of neat. Um, now I want more of Olga's firmness. Sorry, I'm now calling it the Olga technique. Um, yeah. <laughs> dark in here because I feel like that will help you know we've got these bright layers here so I'm liking that darkness right kind of coming in here to solidify my lights. So that's helping a bit to start to get a little bit of shimmer. But yeah, we're going to go in. So go in. I, I know I just jumped ahead, you guys. Um, so jump. So don't hesitate to ask me what I just told you. Ooh. Um, Abby, it looks okay, actually. And I like your blue. Just keep bringing in pink and blue. 
you just need to keep uh what i did addy you're just not far enough yet is i got all my like pink and blue lines in and then i went back in and see filled in the blue in between so just keep getting as many of these sort of twirly shapes as you can with pink and blue and then you'll come back in and, and cut in the blue into this and then the last thing we'll do is we'll go in with some gouache and we'll lighten these areas here okay no you got it and i want to know what color you're using for your water because your water is very uh strong and i like it i like that these uh dip, that these uh these paintings are starting to diverge wildly i'm really liking it now i feel like some uh sort of fun experimentation is happening because you know, what I really want you guys to do is is paint like yourself, right? Like, I don't want you to have to, I don't want you to paint like, I'm not one of those teachers that want you to paint like me. I want you to use my technique and then paint like yourself. So I love it that when things, you know, there's a certain point where we let go of how this looking like mine and you move into what do I want to, you know, what do I want to do? What what is what looks good to me? So the biggest thing with this, the challenge with this watercolor is to preserve the lights, but I feel like we're still going to be able to. So I'm going to add a little gouache to my palette. I'm going to add some. Actually, I'm going to get some palette paper. And do it here. Let's see. Oh yeah, lovely, Olga, beautiful, beautiful. So you see how she preserved her whites? Look at how her whites are engaging with those dark colors around. Lovely, sweetie. So now maybe you should just add a couple more jellyfish in your own style, you know, if, if you, uh, like a couple others like floating around, right? Because- I was doing them. Send them over, send them over. <laughs> Put some together in a little group, you know, make a little a painting, but send over the other ones. I'd love to see them. Oh my God, I am, this is so much fun. All right, so um, over here on the side, let's see, where can I put this? Where do you see this? There we go. Over here, I'm gonna put some white and some yellow and a little bit of red for pink, yellow. Sit down, okay, John. And red. I just have a very simple, I don't think I have a fancy. I don't have the good stuff that you've got, Sandra, but I've got just these. So oh, with yeah. a gouache, I can go in like this, right? And start to, with my white, I can kind of come in here and add in some lights. I can bring back a little bit of light happening here. Oh yeah. And I noticed that these lights have a little bit of yellow. Yeah, that's nice. So, and a little bit of pink. So in places, I'm starting to strengthen particularly in the areas where there are strong white right around the edges of the tentacles on either side. I'm bringing my white back in. Down in here, particularly, there's this crazy, and maybe even a little bit up here, I'm gonna put in a bit more white. Oh yeah, that looks nice. So I've got little bits of white. I'm kind of inserting in here. Wherever I see white, kind of glowing out. Some places, little bits of pink. Yeah. 
even getting. I'm bringing a little bit of white and pink up in here. I'm not even using water right now. Might be going a little too crazy. But what I'm really doing is kind of tracing along the whites. Yes, but you officially have my permission to vary from the design of this uh, CNN, uh, of this uh, jellyfish if you feel like uh, it's getting too, you don't need to get all the complexity for this still to look nice. I don't know if it's going to look nice. Yeah, right? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it will but i totally get that feeling and um you know it's been a long time actually since i've been in exactly the same place you guys are with this but um i am because uh because this is challenging this is challenging for me so don't if you're feeling challenged by it that's awesome don't worry it's all part of the plan <laughs> So you can see here, I'm kind of going, yeah, I think this is really helping. Um, I'm adding little tiny, let's see, here, this is wide, and here, and a little bit of pink. And then it also means I can strengthen my blue. So if I wanted to, I'm gonna put, I've got a little cerulean blue here. I'm gonna try, I wanna see how gouache looks. Um, oh, you know, you might wanna just put a little gouache over the top of your watercolor if you want something a little bit thicker. You see how that's happening? Maybe. I'm leaving you guys. Well, I'll Good luck, good luck, Diana. Bye, Diana. I love your fridge. That's okay. nine o'clock, right? Yeah, it's oh yeah, it's ten o'clock. It's um, it's like nine thirty, nine forty-five. Okay, okay. See you tomorrow. Bye. 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 Hey, good luck. Good luck. Good luck. I hope it gets settled. So you see, I'm like going over the top of this, but I'm leaving, and I'm I'm bringing in a little bit in here. But I'm leaving most of this, most of the watercolory part inside in the middle, right? The bluey watercolory part in the middle, so that there's a little bit more translucence. But if you can go over the edge with another blue, over the edge of the creature or jellyfish, then you have this combination of soft, sort of filmier. Um, one of the things I'm learning about gouache is that you can do what's called reactivating it, right? So once it gets, once it dries, you can kind of go to the edge, add some water, and you can make the edges soft again, right? You can reactivate it. So I'm using a little cerulean blue, come around the edge here. Yeah, I like that. And in here. So if you don't have gouache, just use like thick watercolor paint with less water. This is magic. So Olga, if you've done a whole bunch of those little ones, you should just do a whole little seascape. <laughs> like
like a whole, like do a paper with a little a seascape in it. Um, <laughs> right? Since you're working, and that's one of the advantages of working little is you can go, you can simplify. You don't have to get into all of this detail, right? Yes. You know, I also like to test because I know that sometimes I'm Russian and I don't want to make something bad to the main painting. So I'm doing right. yeah. really, like small one just to rush on them to make it bad because first first of them was really very terrible. And then I had normal painting like right. there's no rush. Right. That's a fantastic way to think about it, Olga, to give yourself that time to like, you know, to be able to, um, uh, that's wonderful. That's now that's really understanding your process, right? Um, one of the reasons I love underpainting so much is that like in oil and acrylic is that I totally am not so worried about the details, right? At, at the at that stage, um, I'm not stressed about them because I know I can fix. Good for you. Oh, Addy, I think you should. I like it. Um, I see Sandra. So make these softer. Paint some blue over most of this. Um, okay. Addy, I like it, but I think you should go over with some acrylic, some um, gouache, right? Use all the gouache colors. You can take a little bit of your gouache and come in like this and add a little bit more pink. See, make that a little bit stronger. I'm using gouache right now to kind of go over in places. Use gouache to try and strengthen some of these. I think it's coming along nicely, but I I think what you're uh, what you don't like is you do, it's not there's not enough difference in your um, in your lights and your darks. So add in some stronger darks, and I think you're going to be happier. Also, this actually has some soft pinks and yellows in here, not just white. So you could also drip those in. But I think this is better than you think it is. Oh, I think that's interesting. Boy, you guys, these are really kind of magical. <laughs> and Sandra, I, so what I would say is you got to, you brought your, your um, you know, there's a real clear area here. Right. You kind of lost in your lines. Okay. So what I is go over with a kind of white and maybe touches of yellow and pink in gouache over the top and cover up give yourself re, re, bring this back okay right? try that with gouache and i think you're going to be happier um, mm. but it's, i know it's a whole it, it's a thing it's a thing we're all learning a thing here it's a very subtle So take your gouache to, um, and notice this top part is definitely, um, what do you call it? It's definitely darker. This is lighter. This is clear. There's not stripe. The stripes kind of stop here. This is quite dark. There are soft bits of pink and blue and yellow within this section. Right, and then there's these, there's soft bits of blue for the background, pink and yellow. You can start layering in gouache to get those kind of to show up on top of each other. Notice how much blue is really in between all these. As it comes down, there's a lot more blue so if you feel like something looks a little blocky, like I came down here and was looking at my lights and thinking they looked a little blocky, I'm drifting in a little bit more blue. And then maybe painting in a kind of thinner, wider area. So go back and forth with darks and lights. Oops. 
there's a push pull thing happening here more than in any other painting we've ever done where these there's these kind of like light and dark and very strong marks right these kind of twirling things and then the soft these softer colors in the background so now feel free to go in with your gouache and try and get some more of that contrast happening as much as you can i don't really i'm not liking this thing here so let me see what i can do to look at what's happening with the edges okay i can see this needs to come in this needs to come down this needs to come out a little bit so i'm trying to get a, i'm trying to look at what's happening where are there light edges where are there dark edges i don't know if i'm even helping it i think I'm, it's too thick so i'm coming in and cutting it down that will help in getting rid of some of it. That did help. Hey, Lee, I'm going to say bye because um, I. it's better if I just listen to the video than. <laughs> Got it. I, uh, Tosh Ween might have a better, I'll ask her. She has a better suggestion for being in class. She seems to do it. She does it quite a lot, actually. But I don't know how she does it. So I will ask her. Yeah. Next time. OK. Maybe she, the next time, if I, I'll, I'll join if I have something where I can just work on the picture. Then it would be easy, like a, like a repeat type of thing. Yeah, OK. Nice to see you, Paul. And then I can take my light. Sandra, this is a, something else I wanted to point out to you. You can make your, these little oh, yeah, girls are much smaller and less. See, I kind of screwed up there because so I'm sort of dragging a little bit and it helps to do them in gouache. So I'm going to do this in gouache. They're not so, they're not solid lines. They kind of go, they fade. In, right. Um, so now I'm going to take some of the background and just blend it right in, right up to the line. So it has a kind of softness. So just thin out those lines super. Because very <laughs> persistent now, strange enough. What's that? A very persistent now, strange enough. Yeah, right. So now what we want is something that isn't always visible. It's not a straight line. It's sometimes obscured by the blue. Um, we can only see little pieces. Oh, yes, an interrupted line. It's an interrupted line. Yeah, that's the word I was looking for. It's an interrupted line. Yeah, this would definitely have been easier in acrylic. Yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> totally. But we're learning something. I still like it. I still, there's something I really like about it. I don't think we did the beast justice, though, I have to say. It's hard to well, get. Well, I think it, I mean, I think that's not a, um, be fair to yourself. <laughs> learning. And I think some ways the beast is better. And in some ways the beast isn't as, right? Like we've added something to the beast by using this medium and, and everybody did it kind of differently, right? Depending on how you're seeing the details and how you're playing with the medium. I don't know, in some ways I think, I mean, we maybe didn't get the translucence, but I still think this is an attractive painting. Like, I don't know, it doesn't. I don't think you're going to be able to sell it, Leah. Oh, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you'd be surprised. This one is actually, I think I can probably. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> I think if I can get this, so I'm definitely going to gouache on the on the base. I don't know, I think it's kind of coming along.
we shall see. You never know what people's tastes are. Paintings that I think are fantastic, you know, sit around for years. And then like paintings, I think are like, what? Like, gonna, you know, it's really weird. It's really weird. Somebody has an obsession with the jellyfish, you know, with the sea, with these colors. They'll, it's funny, we'll see. Maybe not. You know but what a turtle I made. Yeah. It was such a big hit, but somebody I know is making a tattoo out of it on a leg. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'm actually blown away. I mean, if I was going to do a turtle on my leg, I would look at the photograph or something. I don't know. You got it on that one. Your drawing was perfect. The blacks and whites were perfect. You, did, you got it. There's a couple of things I need to fix, but, but I've never had that kind of success where people want to tattoo it on their skin. I think the image, right. So part of that is the image that you chose. And part of that is how you handled it, right? Like the, the, you, your lights and darks, that was a beautiful piece. You your know, it's, uh, it's, it's the giraffe that gave me the confidence to do it without any masking fluid. But I don't know how to do must you, nailed it. you nailed it. It was a beautiful piece. That I'm sorry, I was trying to remember what piece it was I wanted to tell you really turned out well. So oh honey, that's beautiful. I think that's lovely. Okay, I know it's kind of um, a little bit. Let's let's spend a little bit more time. Let's spend another ten minutes on this. Send it over at any point that you want to. Go back and forth at this point between wash and watercolor as you please. Yeah, there are certain things. Yep, it is true. I think I'm going to give up at this stage. Oh, sorry. Yeah, if we were to do this again, I would do it as, as a um, or some similar subject, we would use wash, which is a different, which in which we could layer more the tentacles out and then pull them back. Absolutely. Well, it's neat. I know. I thought we would go. Do you have to go to work yet? Or? It, oh, no. Oh, God. My wash sometimes does strange things. It was showing me like. 3.20, like two hours passed and 20 minutes and I've, I'm supposed to have started my shift. So, so, so work around, so just play with it a little bit longer to see if you can get it to do. I'm just, I'm like, I'm interested in where people take this. I'm giving up. Okay, fair, you can also do that. That's also- I'm okay, giving up because the thing about the, oh, the wow. thing about background in watercolor is you could go over the tentacles, you know, like the colorful tentacles without deleting them. But if you go with brush, you're going to lose them and it's going to be very hard to do the edges. So I'm giving up. Um, Rashmi, so go in with a little gouache and lighten down here. This is nice. I really like some of the things that are happening. So get this area lighter with white gouache, maybe a touch of yellow and pink in it. You see how it, this cap really stops here? Um, yeah. You don't have gouache, right? Then don't, don't worry about it. But like if you have gouache, go over um, here. So lighten this so that we really have this distinct feeling of dark and light here, darker and lighter here. Because it is really quite light. Um, 
and bring in uh so notice you've got some nice darks there so notice that there are some light there's some sort of light you know sort of light. so just continue to pull out some of the light bits like here right i'm just thinking the, for the medium or wash to dry actually it's very what's, wet. what's that i'm just waiting for the wash uh, paint to dry oh what, the, the the watercolor or the gouache I had gone with a wash in the, the blue thing, right? So I dragged it inside as well. Uh, I see, I see. Yeah, so just keep bringing in darks. So you'll see when you come back in here, get this a little bit, get some more dark blues in here and then bring in some gouache lights, right? So just keep working the inside. Um, but I actually think this is pretty good. So you're just going to keep where anyway, that's in general, you're just adding little bits of detail as you see them. I'm really finding it helpful to put the white wash on the top here. You can see I'm doing that in here. Do you see how that really lightens? I streak it a little bit down here. So are you just using white or a very uh, pale pink? I'm using white. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. Ooh, Annika, I like that. That's coming along. So just keep, you're going to be, so Annika, with your white, white yeah. just come in and add more details, right? Like, so instead of thinking of the whole thing, look at an area, be like, can I just get in this little ruffle in here? And notice that this ruffle has a little bit of white. It's got a little yeah. pink, it's got a little bit of blue. Like bringing in the details is going to, um, uh, sort of working in a specific area to bring in a little bit of detail is going to do a lot for the whole thing. I just, I don't have any white in the tube. I don't have wash, I don't have white in the tube, but I tried. So you're stopped here, but like when you get more, you can keep working. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I'm hanging on a little bit more because I want to see where you guys, where this goes. Let's see. Oh no, this is how it is out of the book. Oh! <laughs> I love it, Olga. They're adorable. Thank um, you. You guys, you may not be totally satisfied with how this works. This might not have worked exactly the way you're thinking. Uh, uh, there is, I, if you want to, I encourage you to keep working on it, to notice how the gouache and the acrylic and the, sorry, and the watercolor kind of
blend together, create some solidity and some softness. Um, uh, let your expectation about, uh, I, I think the details are, I think the end, let yourself be a little surprised by the end product. I'm surprised in a good way. I like how this is turning out. I feel like. Yeah, yeah I'll have to log out. I have to cook dinner and I forgot that it's almost quarter to 11. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I'll take into, um, I will take into consideration everything everybody said here. Let us sort of think that we're probably, I'm probably going to add a painting class so uh, to this time zone in the fall. And um, I'm going to add a painting destination, I'm going to add a painting class to this time zone. So, so we might take this class and turn it back into a drawing class of some kind. All right? Yeah. yeah. So when is tomorrow's class so, uh, an hour early? Oh, I was thinking about it. No, let's keep it at the regular time. So um, uh, I want to give people advance notice if I'm going to change the time on it. So next class is an hour later, Rosh. So 930 for you. Um, yeah. But the following week, it will become uh, an 830 p.m. class for you. Start time on Saturday. Okay. Okay. Um Next Saturday, what time is it going to be? Uh, you mean this tomorrow? It'll yes. be at the it'll be at the regular time tomorrow, and then and then if everybody's kind of in agreement, I will uh, I will uh, uh, push it to uh, we'll we'll start at an hour early after that. So it was twelve thirty, and now it's twelve, and then it's going to be eleven. Then eventually for, eleven, if that works for everyone. Okay. I hope it. I I assume it'll work for everyone. Bye. Uh, good night, everyone. Bye. Sorry. Have a good day. I think uh, you were only worried about the LA people. Yeah. And I have, in the I have LA people are early birds like me. So, well, I mean, I have, uh, there may be other LA people who will want to come on, but um, yeah, it doesn't seem like the LA contingent is, uh, the West Coast contingent is as important as everybody else in this case. So I'm okay. Um, not that they aren't as important, but they're more flexible. Including, okay, now I'm becoming obsessed. It's an obsession again. <laughs> it's, I can see it's totally obsessive. One becomes obsessed. It is. Once you start using gouache, it's like completely obsessive. Oh, no, that's terrible. I'll be going. Uh, All right, darling. I think that worked well. What did you think? I liked your final results. Thank you. you. I'm going to be leaving you for two weeks. <gasps> going to Italy? Yes. If everything works well, we will be in Italy. But I'm taking my sketchbook, though not, pet, not watercolors. So hopefully I'm going to train some, you know. Congratulations. Ruins and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> thank you have a good fun. have a good weekend and see you soon you too yeah. 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 great work today bye 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 sweetie uh, it makes me so happy to see people going on vacation <laughs> I have to quit Okay. I'll keep working on it though, but see you uh on the next we will see you next time. Yeah. I'll keep you guys like posted of changes, you know, all the changes, all the things. I know Yours is looking good, Leah. Thank you. It's coming. It may yeah. be it may be salvageable. It is. It looks good. Okay, bye. Bye, thank you. See, it's an obsession, you, you guys, it's crazy. You're right, it's nuts. I understand now what everybody's talking about with watch. So stay on as long as you want to, I'm just kicking it here.
what shall we paint next week, you guys? I mean, do you guys want to go to uh, gouache? We probably could take this class to gouache. I could just turn it into a gouache class. That would be fun. I, I'd come. You like that? Okay. Um, Olga, what about you? Would you prefer to stay in watercolor or go to gouache? I like both. Both with the right. color and gouache. I kind of like both too. So maybe we can do more combos. Sandra, you do want to, so now I'm like kind of torn. I'm like, I don't know what I want to do for painting now. Should we do gouache or watercolor or both? Can you teach gouache? You said you needed a bit more time. Well, now that I'm seeing, you know. How it I, works, right? It's close to. It's both. close to acrylic. I don't think I'll have a problem yeah. with it. Um, or maybe we'll teach combo things, things with both. That's yes. just watercolor and go to gouache. What if we did that? There's even a paint set, but it's a Korean paint set that is supposed to be a gouache and watercolor. You're kidding. That's cool. All right, then what should we paint next week, you guys? Those of you who are still here, you get to decide. Tell me. Oh, what you... an animal. Animal. An animal. <laughs> Come on. Olga and Sandra, I know you've got a bunch. Do you want to do a turtle like that turtle that you did? Or you feel like, like a sea another sea turtle? Yeah, let's do a sea turtle. What about that? I wouldn't mind doing another sea turtle because it had so much success. Can I wouldn't I, mind doing another one. Sandra, can I um, assign you to find one for us? Yeah. Or uh, well, I have many. Um... <laughs> of course you do. <laughs> that's <what I'm> <laughs> of course you do. That is why I'm. That's why you're doing it. <laughs> I'm gonna send you some. Um. All right, send us some over and we'll decide. I'm sending you some now, okay? If the others are not gonna complain that we hijacked a subject. No. I don't think Rashmi is a fan of watercolor. I think she's fine. No. She says she misses... Um, um, uh, so that's why I would like to maybe, you know what I could say is Maybe ultimately we can do a gouache slash acrylic painting session. Well, what? Yes. Why don't you say give her a choice to do it in acrylic if she wants to? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I mean, for a long time I was in watercolor when you guys were in acrylic. Yeah. I've sent you some, Leah. All right. So, um, all right. So maybe what we'll do, we'll. I'm just trying to figure out what to do in my demos, right? Like what I should be using. I should probably. Well, because this is the gouache and some watercolor maybe base and gouache on top um that i think i can totally do and i think it'll be easy so um um and then we'll offer people the option of using acrylic instead right because you can't really yes exactly. you can't why don't you do that Right? We can't really scoot. Yeah, I know. It's so funny. It's like, oh my God, how do we do the demos? How do we do this? Without giving everybody their choices, letting them work within the context. Um, yes. And I'm going to actually send a note to Rashmi and say, hey, guess what? You can use acrylic if you want to. <laughs> I know you're sick of watercolor. <laughs> I know you hate it. So that's okay. I mean, it's okay to find you don't really like something very much. And all right, so send over some turtles. We'll decide. I, I, I found a couple, some more. We'll move to this kind of hybrid. Uh, we'll move to this kind of hybrid uh, 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 watercolor -y gouache thing that people could do in acrylic as well. I think that's a totally valid way to do it. That gives people options. Yep. Yeah. Let's see. Oh my God. All right. Let me look. <gasps> I'm finding many more. Um, so what I like, I like these, Sandra, but I want one with some nice light, dark, like some good lighting, you know, where part of it is. Here's one, um, here is one. Like this one is the closest so far. It's got some nice light darks. Um, let me show you. That was so 
cute. Look at his little face. But I thought the background might overwhelm people. Oops. Here, I'm going to... Oh, boat. 